Geezers, what's going on? Specimen here. We're going to be doing an in-depth review of the Marvel Snap patch notes. 20th of September, less than a month away from full release. 18th of October is full release. Obviously, uh, let me know what you think about the changes. We're going to talk about all the bug changes and all the additions of audio. Uh, also, some changes to the weekly quest, which I'm very excited for. Let's start with the meat and potatoes, the balance updates, because it is huge. There's so many, the most that I've ever seen in a balance patch in Marvel Snap. I think it's the biggest in history. Uh, I don't think that's wrong to say. So, first and foremost, Arnim Zola no longer adds copies of a card if his target was not destroyed. This is technically enough, more like a bug fix if you ask me. So if armor was present in the Arnim Zola row, Arnim Zola would um, not destroy any card in his in the row you play him, but then you would still get two copies. That's no longer going to happen. Arnim Zola now actually has to destroy something. So if you have Colossus in an empty row and you Arnim Zola it, it's just going to be a zero point play. Whereas before... Uh, your Colossus would stay and then you would get a Colossus in each other row. That's no longer going to happen. Kind of more like a bug fix because of the card text. It makes more sense. Um, Baron Mordo getting a really big buff. This is one of the worst cards I've ever seen. Uh, it's two energy, three stats. So slightly below curve. Obviously, you're looking at like four stats usually. Um, your opponent is going to draw a card and set its cost to six. Um, so the developer comment. Baron Mordo's cost increase tens to be very inconsequential in practice. We're bumping his effects cost markup to make it more impactful. Before it was just increasing the cost by one. It was complete garbage. Now, uh, is the card good? Mm, well, it's still below curve, right? It's three stats for, for two energy and your opponent is still drawing the card. Okay, they're setting it to six. So I guess it's like maybe good with um, the Ronin card, for example, like that's you know, I think plus three. I think this card got changed as well. So we can look at, I think it's now plus three. So some synergy there. Also, if you're trying to play some kind of mill deck, it's a buff to mill. Is mill actually good in Marvel Snap? No, um, but I still haven't unlocked all the cards. I don't actually have Baron Mordor as a card. I don't believe uh, to try it out. It's definitely a big buff. Is this card good? Um, no, I'm going to say it's not. Very, very niche. I would be very surprised if it sees any play at all. But yeah, maybe with Ronan, because I think Ronan got changed as well. We can take a look at that. Uh, Jessica Jones, this is a change I'm really excited to see. And in fact, something that I love about this patch is a lot of the five and six cost cards have changed. Jessica Jones being one of them. Jessica Jones um, previously was like eight stats and she would get plus two if you played it in uh, the same row. Uh, they've now changed it to a 4-4 four, four on reveal if you don't play a card here next turn plus four power. So she's the inverse of Rescue. Which is a really good card, by the way. I think Rescue's buffing by five, so I think Rescue is like one step better. But obviously, it's Jessica Jones's. Uh, there's two lanes you could play the card, and she would still buff her as Rescue. You're very much locked in. Jessica Jones' effect is one that, that was a bit too stifling to be reliant on turn six. So we're looking at a change similar to Rescue, where moving her to be a four cost card will allow her to her effect team will play. This is a really lovely change. I think this is a very very solid card. You've also got Crossbones. Uh, at this kind of range, like a four uh, for eight stats. Uh, Crossbones, you can only play at a location you're already winning. Jessica Jones, kind of like a similar stat line. I think Crossbones is actually a pretty decent card as well. It doesn't see that much play. It's like right on the border, right, of, of being playable. But I think Jessica Jones is probably better than Crossbones. Um, I think it's a really solid card. I'm excited to to just have another option in at four. A lot of the four cost cards that you pick at the moment are cards like Shang-Chi, Historically, Enchantress, if you're in pool one, right? Um, Dino, but that's Dino's also been changed to a five drop this this patch. So I think Jessica Jones will see some play. I also have a nice variant for Jessica Jones, and it's a character I do like a lot. So very happy for that. Lady Sif also getting, in my opinion, nerfed. Um, she's got one extra energy, one extra stat. Again, for one energy, you usually want like two stats. So it's definitely a nerf, in my opinion. Um, moreover, the synergy she has now with Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, I think it costs four energy these days. I also don't have Ghost Rider. Um, and Lady Sif was two. So you could go Lady Sif plus Ghost Rider turn six. You're no longer going to be able to do that unless you've got some kind of ramp. Um, because, yeah, Lady Sif is now costing three energy. So her effect in combination with many other cards is very strong, especially on a two cost card with higher power. So we're moving her up to a three cost. Oh, it is literally just a straight nerf. I was like thinking she got an extra stat. No, she literally just got straight up nerfed. I think it's a fair nerf. A lot of the discard cards, in my opinion, are overcosted. Lady Sif, probably the best of them. Um, I think it's a very fair nerf. I still think the card will see play. If a card is getting nerfed by one whole energy and it still sees play, that's how you know it's a fair nerf because that's a huge nerf to Lady Sif. Uh, but the card's still good, I think. Uh, obviously, just the synergy of Ghost Rider, synergy of Hella as well. Uh, yeah. Mr. Negative getting a huge enough. Thank bloody God, my least favorite card in the game. Uh, has lost three stats. Um, a huge enough. Um, 
The Mr. Negative deck is very strong and tends to have an unhealthy play pattern of skipping your first few turns. We're taking Mr. Negative's power down to tone the deck down. While this may seem like a big change, the power of the deck is largely in the cards hit by Mr. Negative, so we don't foresee this being a massive hit to the deck's overall power. Yeah, this deck is like the best deck in the game. Losing three stats seems huge, but again, that's how you know a card is bloody good if it's still going to see you play. Obviously, the synergy it has with cards like Iron Man, White Tiger. Um, yeah, I think this is a big change. Personally, I still think this deck might be too strong. We'll have to wait and see. There is like another nerf to um, this deck, which is in Devil Dinosaur, um, being moved away from zero stats. Devil Dinosaur got changed a little bit, which we'll get onto. That does also impact this deck a bit. Also, obviously, Arnim Zola got changed, but I don't think that's going to actually impact this deck. Arnim Zola is a card you can play in Mr. Negative. My my thing I don't like about Mr. Negative is how you can't really predict what your opponent's doing, right? Like, if they draw that Iron Man, they just get a random extra, like, million stats that cost nothing. So, uh, obviously, in a, in a game where, like, you can snap and then not concede, like, you, they just get a lot of eight cube games, right? So, it's always going to be a really good deck to climb with. Uh, it's got a very high level of power, but also got that surprise factor of being able to just play cards randomly uh, and add on like a whole extra bunch of points on turn six. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be keeping my eye on this negative. I still think the deck's going to be great. Uh, hopefully it's it's less frustrating to play against because it's my least favorite deck in the whole game. Um, Professor X, at least to play against. Uh, ongoing lockdown this location. Basically, the text has been changed to make it more simple. It works in exactly the same way. I think the only difference, and they do mention it, is um, cards like Hobgoblin and Green Goblin will now not change sides if Professor X comes down. So on turn five, if I have initiative with Professor X and I play my Professor X, my opponent plays Hobgoblin, the Hobgoblin's going to stay. However, if my opponent has the initiative, the Hobgoblin would move first and then Professor X would show up. So you just have that little bit of extra advantage of having initiative with Professor X, which suits the card. A lot of those other control type cards like Armor and Cosmo have some benefit of having initiative. So I think it makes sense that Professor X is working in a similar way. I don't think there's any other cards which this is currently impacting, but obviously down the line there could be more things. Let me know in the comments if there's any other niche situations you can think of with Professor X, um, which this is now going to be different for. Spider-Man got buffed. Yes, Spider-Man is one of my favorite cards. I use it all the time, much to my detriment because I don't really climb that often. Uh, it, it's got a 50% increase in its power. Uh, it's, only, it's only one stat, but one stat is a big deal for Spider-Man. That is the difference between winning and losing a lane in a lot of situations. Um, yeah, definitely deserve the buff. I think this card is much more reasonable at this stat line. I just play Spider-Man so much because I have so much fun with it, but Really, really happy to see that. Another card I'm a big fan of has also been changed. Thor has uh, dropped down um, one energy, two stats. So that's the baseline that you would expect. It is a buff. It's definitely, definitely a buff. Um, I think it's a buff. It's definitely a buff. Uh, because, yeah, exactly. You have an extra turn to draw more on you. Which, if you're playing Thor, you want to draw this card. Um, Thor's best in Lockjaw decks. I actually think having another three-cost card is really nice because a lot of the time in a Lockjaw deck, what you really want to do is you want to play Lockjaw, then Jubilee, then a five-cost card, then something else. But then if you don't have Lockjaw, what do you play? And a lot of the time, I just play Storm in that deck, um, which I'm not really sure is that good because you don't really want to like Lockjaw into Storm. But having another option at three to just play, I think is fan bloody tastic. So if you don't draw your lock draw, you can play Thor on turn three. Then you can still play your Jubilee, and then you can play your Jane Foster on turn five. Uh, I do think Thor Jane Foster combo is really really underrated. There was actually some stats which got released soon showing that Jane Foster had one of the highest win percentages out of any card. I think she was like fifth. Um, so yeah, and she's best in combo with Thor. So I'm really excited for this change. Thor just didn't quite feel right at four costs, particularly because um, in Lockjaw decks, I think it makes a lot of sense. And in Thor decks, honestly, it kind of makes a lot of sense to play Chavez. You don't really want to draw Moynya, maybe as your, as your last on turn six. I mean, maybe you do, it depends. But Chavez just makes a lot of sense because it's increasing the odds of you drawing that Thor. It's increasing the, the odds of you drawing Jane Foster as well. Uh, it's increasing you the odds of drawing Lockjaw early as well. So I'm a massive fan of Chavez in those decks. It's also just like a nice card to be thin from Lockjaw, right? Um, it just makes a lot of sense to play uh, Chavez with Thor and Lockjaw. So yeah, before you just have one turn to just randomly draw them on you and it's never going to happen. Whereas now you've got two. I love this change. It's probably my favorite change we've seen so far. Apart from the nerfs, can I just say, love that we're getting nerfs to cards, but also love that we're getting cards like Baron, which just don't see any play getting buffed. It's, it's the best way um, 
a designer in my opinion and they're being heavy on the nerfs as well like these are some serious nerfs uh one of my pet peeves of gwent balance is that they're not heavy enough on the nerfs these are big nerfs um but i also don't think they're like over overdoing it you know uh, okay now we're on to the five cost cards where there's a bunch of changes uh, abomination got a point buff again this is another reason i'm very happy to see jessica jones getting reworked jessica jones was super similar to abomination before you know it's just a 10 stat stick um with like a little bit of variance sometimes it's gonna be eight stats so yeah I, i'm really happy to see this it always felt weird that you got jessica jones like straight after abomination and it was just literally a straight upgrade abomination might actually see some play um very early game right when you're just starting out uh, obviously it's a buff to patriot decks as well if you want to play it arrow getting two stats i think is really huge uh, i don't think many people have really been experimenting with these kingpin arrow movement type decks mainly because a lot of the cards are in pool three uh, it's very difficult to get all of them i know for example i've got kingpin i think i even have arrow but like i don't have magneto for example right like there's just lots of cards that you need so uh, arrow getting a buff is very interesting uh black bolt also getting a stat i don't think black bolt's any good still i think black bolt probably needed a little bit more than one stat uh black bolt's um destroy uh, discarding your opponent's lowest cost card blue flipping marvel is five cost holy moly guys i think this is one of the most exciting changes again love seeing uh, a card like blue marvel which just doesn't see any play very difficult to justify as a, as a six drop but a five drop this is going to open up a whole bunch of new decks blue marvel decks is one of the decks i'm going to be definitely checking out on patch day if you guys want to see a blue marvel deck let me know i'm definitely going to be checking it out so very very excited uh, he's lost a stat uh, and lost an energy so it's just like a huge 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 buff because i'm saying like two stats per energy but really at this stage right being able to play blue marvel on turn five and then play something else on turn six whether it's like ultron it's probably not going to be or like a doctor doom or whatever it might be that's you know the strategy of your deck even though you can like arnim zola blue marvel right so you can get two blue marvels like it's you're not going to go for that but you get what i mean there's a lot of possibilities now that it, this opens up i'm very 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 excited i think this is one of the most exciting changes um blue marvel's looking pretty damn good i reckon as a five drop a lot of the time in Marvel snap on the final turn you just want to play like a stat stick like a hulk type card or chavez um because you it's just going to secure the lane so having this blue marvel to come through earlier and then you've of course still got the option of playing it on turn six with a one drop as well um for like that surprise finisher if, if that's what you want to go for instead so really really love this change devil dinosaur also getting changed uh importantly as mentioned it's no longer zero stats so it is going to be um worse in well you're not going to play in mr negative decks so that's another change to mr negative uh it's now five energy so you can play a turn later but it got three stats so it is a buff overall but it's enough for mr negative decks i think it's a really good change i like it a lot i think devil dinosaur with the amount of points that it can play for it can play for 14 right but now it can play for 17 stats um i think it makes sense that it's a higher cost card like a, a five drop seems more reasonable for this card moon girl also is a four drop right so kind of just makes more sense like you play collector then you play something at free then you play moon girl then you can play dino and then dino again and then a one drop or whatever it might be you know i think this is just a nice change overall uh yeah it's definitely a buff and it's enough to miss a negative decks cool gamora change now i don't i'll be honest mate gamora is one of the and one of the few cards in here i'm not exactly sure what her previous stats were so we can take a look uh, she's now five energy seven stats it's definitely a buff on reveal if your opponent played a card here this time plus five power let's just take a quick little look at what she was doing before i have a feeling that her base power has gone up by one did you actually spell it no it's like that i was like do you spell it game aura nope uh oh so she's actually got two stats so her base power has gone up by one and also her condition's gone up by one so pretty sizable buff there for gamora is this card good now well, I can play for 12 stats for five. That's actually decent. That is actually pretty decent, mate. That's a nice buff. I like this buff a lot. Ooh, Gamora's looking kind of decent. Especially, obviously, with Jessica Jones changing as well. Like, Jessica Jones and Gamora and Abomination. Like, these cards are all super similar. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, obviously, like, Gamora now may be more of an option of, like, Daredevil as well, right? Uh, Daredevil, of course, showing your opponent's plays on turn five um i think usually with daredevil you're going to be more inclined to be playing cards like professor x and spider-man so maybe not but it's an option obviously like guardians of the galaxy is just like a general deck aren't really that much of a thing um yeah it's a starter card it's a pull one card buffs to pull one cards are going to be impactful certainly 
um, for the new players coming into the game next month. Claw ongoing 5-4. So I don't think that's changed. Ongoing, the location to right has plus six power. Let's take a quick look. Claw's another one I'm not exactly sure on. I think he was just buffing by four before, or five rather. So yeah, he... um. Or is he Claw? He's, he's the exact same. He's just got an extra point um, to the ongoing ability, which is a pretty sizable buff. Uh, it's more than just a point because of like synergies of cards like Onslaught as well, right? If you play like Claw plus Onslaught, then um, that's going to be two stats extra, right? For example. So um, yeah, nice little buff to Claw. Claw's a card that is again a pull one card. I always thought was pretty decent. Um, and so I used to use quite a bit when I was starting the game out. As soon as you hit pull three though, he's just not really seeing uh, much play at all. Red Skull getting buffed, I'm honestly not a massive fan of. I think Red Skull was already good. Uh, I think the problem with Red Skull is it's one of those cards in pull three that's just similar to Aero maybe, um, just needing a lot of synergy. But I think Red Skull's really fairly statted already. Cards like Zero, and then like Arnim Zona, Venom, um, Taskmaster, like... There's a lot of synergy with this card. It got a point. It's not really that big a buff considering, you know, how many stats it already has like in terms of percentage increase. I'm not against it. Do I think it needed it? No, but this kind of just shows you that uh, the developers are just really keen to try and bring everything into a nice playable area uh, where they're just happy to give it a little point buff. Uh, obviously, like one point on Spider-Man is huge, whereas one point on Red Skull is, is maybe not a significant um, but still a very, very interesting change. I guess also though, like if you're thinking Red Skull, if you're going to be playing like Taskmaster, for example, that's like an extra point on your Taskmaster as well. So maybe it's a bigger, bigger buff than it initially looked. Ronan, this is another card we were talking about. This is going to be used in Mr. Negative decks. It's now a 5-0 before I'm pretty sure it was a four cost. Ongoing plus three power for each card in your opponent's hand. So I believe before it was four cost um, plus two, basically just like a reverse dino, whereas now it's five cost. Still zero stats, but plus three power. So Ronan's going to be the card that you're going to be using in Mr. Negative decks over the Dinosaur for sure. Um, obviously, there's some synergy there with Baron Mordo as well, if you want to consider going for that. Um, is this card good? Mm -hmm. It's definitely good in Mr. Negative decks. So yeah, I think it's not bad. Spider-Woman getting a huge change. So Spider-Woman on reveal is decreasing the power of every card your opponent has there by one. Um, so before she could play for up to eight stats for four, but very conditionally, it was weak. She's now five energy, seven stats. So one uh, energy buff, three stats. Um, it's definitely a buff. I think the other thing with Spider-Woman is you're more likely to want to play her on turn five because you actually want your opponent's road to be full to maximize her value. It's definitely a big buff. Um, is this card good now? Well, she can play for 11, for five. It's not that impressive. Uh, let me make sure Spider-Woman is only one. There's no way she's doing two, right? Is this card good now? It's certainly a lot better. Yeah. Click to enemy cards here. Also, uh, you need initiative. Uh, you don't want initiative with this card, right? Uh, like, if your opponent plays a card, you want them to have an initiative, and then Spider-Man comes through. Is she good? She's better than she was, but she was trash before. I think she maybe could have even got, like, an extra power. But, I don't know. It's a big buff. Three stats, one energy, probably, like... It's a big buff. It's definitely a big buff. I don't think it's that good though still. Uh, I, I can't really think of that many big synergies with Spider-Woman. Um, 11 stats, conditional 11 stats for 5 is just not that impressive, I don't think. Um, and then again, Gamora is like a conditional 12 for 5, right? Uh, and Spider-Woman has like some more synergy moves like Green Goblin, for example. Um, obviously as well, like your opponent's row might be full when you're Spider-Woman in an inning. Um... Whereas Gamora, that's not the case. So Spider-Woman is like helping you win a row that your opponent can't commit to anymore. So you can play Spider-Woman on turn five to secure one lane and then play your Chavez, for example, on turn six to secure the second lane. So, um, yeah, the card's kind of good. I think the card's decent. I don't think it's going to see like that much play like as a mid-range value card. Um, but yeah. Agatha got a point. I like that. I know there's like some kind of like Agatha uh, Hella deck. It's a card I still don't have. Hulk also got a point, which I love. I think Hulk is looking really, really good at 12 stats for six. Hulk is actually a card that I'm a massive fan of. I think it's really underrated. Um, obviously, it just gets overshadowed again when you hit cards like Giganto. Uh, Magneto, though, like maybe Hulk's got a lot of upsides over Magneto. Magneto, again, a card I don't actually have any experience using because I don't have it. But um, yeah, Hulk's same stats as Magneto. So um, 
Yeah, I, I think Hawks looking really flipping good actually at 12 stats. Obviously, Chavez getting nerfed as well. Uh, once upon a time, Chavez was 10 stats, Hulk was 11. Now there's a three stat difference, and that is very justified. I'm excited to see this Hulk buff. Very nice. Also, we did see that Hulk was 12 stats in the trailer, which got released um, a week or two ago. Onslaught got a point. I think it's a nice change. Spectrum also got a point. I think that's also a nice change. Um, nice buffs to both these cards. Ultron. It's now a 6-8 on reveal, create four one-power drones at each loca other location. Ultron's a really weird card. 6-8, uh, I feel like that's got mm, two stats buff. I think it was six stats before. It was seven stats. So it's only got buffed by a point. Not a significant change particularly then, but still nice to have. Uh, developer comment many of our five and six cost cards don't quite live up to their lofty energy cost. We'd also like to give our... Five cost cards some more identity as many of them at the moment have rather simplistic effects compared to many of the other cards in snap we're making a suite of balance changes targeted at the five and six cost range to help some cards that are underperforming and provide some interesting options at five cost okay overall i give these balance changes a 9.9 .9 out of 10 i think it's fantastic i'm super 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 thrilled with this balance patch and i'm not just saying that a lot of the time i'm quite critical of, of balance patches in other games i play like i don't think the nerfs are are hard enough and i don't like gwen what gwen's done recently very well is it's been buffing loads of underplayed cards and snap's also doing a very similar thing they're not giving as many reworks maybe as gwen gives but that's because there's like a much smaller pool of cards right gwen has uh, like over a thousand cards i think whereas this game has like 150 so there's not gonna be as many radical reworks but you are seeing some like jessica jones getting this big rework um being the the most obvious example uh, and like this change to thor is just like very well thought out like a little Spider-Man buff, two of my favorite cards, right? Professor X change, just making it more simple, sure. Mr. Negative change, losing three stats I like. It's a heavy nerf, same with Lady Sif. These are heavy nerfs for very popular cards, but I still think they're going to see play, which shows you that they're probably on the money. I wouldn't even be that surprised if Mr. Negative ends up getting nerfed even further down the line, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of all of these changes. There's not a single change in this that I don't like. I like every single one of these changes, I think. Um, yeah, all right, nice, great job. And this blue Marvel to five, like, whew, yeah, I like every single change. I'm just gonna give it, I'm gonna be honest, I'm just gonna give it, oh, I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because it's like cards like magic and cards like, uh, that other girl that people use that reduce the cost of everything. I can't think of a name, but I don't have that card. Um, Sarah, neither of those cards in it, so, I mean, maybe it's not needed either, like, I don't know. They're very popular cards, but maybe they're not as good with this Mr. Negative getting changed. They just felt like this was the main problem rather than Sarah. And um, yeah. All right. So maybe those two cards escape nerfs. Are there any other cards you guys think should have got nerfed? Let's take a look at um, some changes to the locations. There's bug fixes, but there's also some stuff at the top to do with quests and stuff, which we get onto now. Um, Atilan. After turn three, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw three cards. I'm really happy with this. Basically, it was on turn at the start of turn four before, and it always just felt a bit weird that like you draw your card and then shuffle it back, whereas like this is now you shuffle and then you draw three and then you draw another. So I like it. This one always used to confuse me. Um, so this is a nice change. Um, and then Necrosha is basically just replaced Clintar. They've just swapped. So Clintar will come back and do something else later. So no real big changes to locations. Did I see there was a new location? Uh, the new location is basically just Clintar. Okay, there's a new set of emotes available. Nice. I'm excited to check those out. Uh, the matchmaking system will allow for longer wait time for high ranked players to increase the likelihood of finding a more competitive opponent. This is really a huge change. I've been hovering around the lower ranks more recently, but when I was like rank 100 plus consistently, I was just like getting to like rank 150 because I was just queuing into bots um, because there wasn't enough opponents and the matchmaking would just pay me with a bot. So this is a great change. This one's huge. I think this is a fantastic change. Uh, weekly mission requirements have been reduced to 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Previously, they were 5, 10, 20, 30, 35. Uh, basically, um, going from 35 missions needed to can be completed each reached to 25. I do feel like the game was feeling a little bit too grindy for me personally in pool 3, where like, in order to complete this weekly challenge, I was really having to go out of my way. Now, admittedly, I uh, the game doesn't have as much content as it will like come release, right? Um, like I've been, I've had the game for like four or five months, whatever it is now. There's not new content. 
Uh, also, I'm playing on like a burner phone. Like it's not my actual phone. I'm playing on like a different phone. So I'm having to really go out of my way. It's not like if I'm at the gym or if I'm on the loo, I'm playing Snap. No, well, sometimes on the loo, but not at the gym anywhere. If I'm in the bus, I can't play Snap, right? So yeah, but for me, I'm a big gamer. I play the game a lot and it did feel like a grind to try and get this 35, like almost like uncomfortably so, right? Like I'm logging in when I didn't even want to. That's what you want to try and avoid, right? Like you want people to still be logging in and, and have like that addiction to like these, getting these quests done, but you don't want it to feel like a chore. So I think reducing it by 10. Very good choice. The game results screen has been visually upgraded. Uh, card art variant names are now visible in the shop. Yes, I've seen this. So for example, there's like a, in the shop, if there's a baby variant, it'll call it a baby variant. Or if there's a venomized variant, it'll actually say it's a venomized variant, um, etc. Double the max number of decks from 10 to 20 more deck slots. Let's go. Haptics are now supported in Android devices. They were already present on iOS. That's if, you're, if I'm moving my phone, things are moving. Um, yeah, because I'm playing on iOS, I'm used to that. Game resolution has been increased on low settings. That's cool. Um, added a download all assets button in settings that will let players choose to download all game files at a time of their choice. Downloading ahead of time will improve match game performance for players on devices with less RAM, slower processors, and or poor network connectivity. It's also huge. Uh, I experience all of these issues because the device I'm using is, is yeah, it gets very hot. Uh, it has a slow processor and if I want to play at the gym, uh, the network sucks. So I'm, I might actually try and take a uh, snap with the gym to me today and, and beforehand download all the assets and see if I notice the improvement. Um, some localization effects for Spanish um, localization support. Uh, art and visual effects. Um, when moving, ongoing effect updates are paused while moving multiple cards. So for example, if you have sandbound on the board, you know how like all the sand's going. When you move the first card, bad example. When you move the first card, the sand will still show up. When you try and move the second card, which of course you can't move sand, man. But if you could, then the sand would stop showing up. Uh, another example would be, I guess like the location, like bar with no name. I think that has like some kind of effect, right? Okay, yeah, bad example. Updated visual effects for Agatha. Apocalypse. What the hell is Apocalypse? I don't even know what this bloody card is. What? What is this card? Oh, that one. Uh, Ghost Rider, Goose, Craven. Uh, I've got some new visual effects. I'm excited to see. I've uh, also visual updates for Atalan, Bifrost, Mindscape, The Raft, and audio new card sounds for Adam Warlock, Apocalypse, Colossus, Doctor Doom, Ghost Rider, Craven, Lockjaw. Ooh, Mojo, Mystique, Quake, Warpath, Wong. Uh, that's a lot. New location sounds for Baxter Building, June Dimension, Nowhere, Lichu Gula, Gulia, uh, Mindscape, Nida, Villa, The Raft, and voiceovers. They've removed the defeat voiceover line. Good idea. And Spanish voiceover has also been added. Uh, then we can take a quick look at bug fixes as well. And then that is the patch notes done. Uh, Cards should now be less likely to show up black, blank, empty during matches. This is something we have in Gwent as well, to be honest. Like, uh, there's one card in Gwent called Lambert, which always shows up like this whenever you're using the Observer. So. Yeah, uh, fix or not an issue where let you go to or Korg adding rocks to the hand could cause clients to freeze. Fix the bug which sh that should prevent should prevent death lock visual effects freezing some devices. Okay, players can now retreat if your opponent plays dead. Devil on turn five and snaps. Bro, I'm sure they could retreat before. I played so much dead devil and I never knew this was a bug. Uh, fix the bug where two friendly dead devils would result in their effect being cancelled. I've actually experienced that one. Now I am also not a fan of the interaction for daredevil when you and your opponent has one whoever has initiative it works like backwards whoever has initiative gets to see their opponents or doesn't it's weird i don't know basically one of the players gets to see where the other player plays theirs it, it just feels very weird i feel like they should cancel each other out basically uh wong's ability now functions correctly with onslaught if onslaught is played after wong oh damn um, it, there was like some kind of like fix Wong. Uh, hashtag going around. So yeah, this is like a deck you can play now. I don't have Wong. So uh, on reveal effects triggered by Odin and now doubled by Kamartaj. Improved speed of Kazar and Blue Marvel's abilities when they update card power. That's cool. Um, very excited to try a Kazar Blue Marvel deck. You could play like Kazar Blue Marvel Ultron even now, right? I don't think that's very good. Patriot. Imagine you go like Patriot, Kazar, Blue Marvel in the middle lane. And then uh, Ultron. Sounds kind of sick. Um, fixed an issue where Domino can get stuck in your hand after you've played her. Yeah, that happens all the time. 
Um, so I'm glad that's fixed. Fix an issue where Hulk's created by Gamma Lag retain modifiers. Yep. So for example, if you use Rocket Raccoon and it got the plus two and then transformed into Hulk, it would keep the plus two. That's no longer going to be the case. Fix an issue where the peak did not visually change the power of some cards. I don't even know what the peak is, if I'm honest. Xandar VFX activation cleaned up. Falcon VFX now moves and Falcon moves. Fix an issue where cards could go invisible in hand when switching hands of your opponent. Limbo VFX should no longer appear if the game is already over when the location is revealed. If Dark Dimension are invisible when it's in play, right? Um, the opponent's cards in the top right. The opponent's cards in the top right of the rightmost location should now be easier to tap to focus. Cool. So top right in the in the right. This is that side for you, but yeah, it's on my right hand. Mr. Fantastic no longer plays VFX. He's played on the only location remaining. Okay. Slightly adjusted the end turn buttons, readability, and transitions. General fixes. Fixed an issue where auto push season rewards could soft lock the client. TVA no longer prevents missions from completing correctly. Death's body is no longer missing on her base card art. Um, yeah, I heard about that. I never noticed. I'll be honest. Collect the cash reserve image is no longer disappear when scrolling this, uh, the collection. Tree. Swiping through cards in the collection no longer closes the card. Swiping through cards in the collection no longer closes the card instead of moving to the next card. Pasting a deck if you do not own all the court cards will now create a deck with the cards you do own for that copy deck. Players now get credit for completing the win matches of the snap mission when their opponent snapped. Okay. Cool. Uh, season key art should now show up again on Android. Android back button should now take you to the main screen if used in the shop and collection screens. Many bug fixes for various cards and avatar. Okay, there's the patch notes. Bloody huge patch. Great job, second day. This is a 9 out of 10 patch. Uh, probably a 9.9, .9, honestly. Like, again, I think people are surprised probably that Magic and Sarah weren't nerfed, but, mate, I don't really care. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll be streaming lots more Marvel Snap um, at twitch.tv forward slash specimen. There's going to be loads more Marvel Snap content coming soon. Kind of just waiting for the game to be ready to be released. Uh, I have not really, I've been playing, but I haven't been streaming. But now there's a nice little balance patch. Um, I'm going to be making lots of cool decks. Hopefully we'll get a full collection pretty soon. And yeah, very excited for the uh, full release. Thanks for watching all this time. You're a real one. Let me know in the comments what you think about the patch. Do you agree? Is there anything that you would like to have seen change? Is there any card that you really want to see get buffed that you think sucks? And you would like to see get brought up to being more competitive? See ya!